In 2003, when India was chosen to host the 19th Commonwealth Games slated for 2010, it was a moment of national pride. Though heavy on the exchequer, playing host would be an opportunity to showcase Indian glory to the world. But in September 2010, with less than 30 days before the start of the Games, India was in a state of crisis. Before the Games had even begun, a footbridge built around the main stadium collapsed. We are disappointed in a number of things. There's no question at all about that. There are matters relating to transport and difficulties there, the security arrangements, the fire safety arrangements, evacuation of the buildings. But these stories of national embarrassment pales in comparison to the massive fraud brewing under the surface. Inflated contracts and crooked deals ballooned the budget for the Games from around 412 to an eye-watering estimate of $6 billion. This is a story of how officials set up a maze of scams at one of the biggest sporting events in the world, bringing down India's reputation on an international stage. This is The Big Steal. To understand how skeletons stumbled out of India's closet at the 2010 Commonwealth Games, let's begin on October 29, 2009, when the Queen's Baton Relay event flagged off from London. The Commonwealth Games Organizing Committee paid a relatively unknown UK-based company a huge sum of $589,000 for video equipment, transport, toilets, and barricades, all without a contract. British officials flagged the transaction to India in 2010. Soon, investigations uncovered that three high-level officials from the Games Organizing Committee were accepting kickbacks, and they were suspended for allegedly inflating payments. These allegations came to the attention of India's Central Vigilance Commission, an anti-corruption watchdog. And around the same time, more irregularities were uncovered in 16 game-related projects. Members of the organizing committee came under fire from the media and the opposition for alleged lack of financial oversight. Soon, damning evidence pointed to the main figure behind the 2010 Commonwealth Games, Suresh Kalmadi. The beleaguered organizing chairman insisting time and again that every outstanding problem was under control. Because again, after the opening ceremony, people had their problems. But now, as of today, things are all right. A retired Indian Air Force pilot, Kalmadi joined the Congress party and was appointed a minister in Indian Parliament in 1982, and later a junior minister in the Narsim Harao government. Kalmadi also served as the president of the Indian Olympic Association and the Asian Athletics Association, making him synonymous with Indian sports. Not unexpectedly, in 2005, he was chosen to helm the 2010 Commonwealth Games. At the time, India was trying to shed its skin as a developing country and emerge as a global superpower. Beijing had just hosted a spectacular 2008 Summer Olympics, making New Delhi all the more eager to showcase its own capabilities through the Games. But officials under Kalmadi's leadership started preparations several years too late. A grim picture as India counts down to the 2010 Commonwealth Games. Well, they have a lot of work to do, <laughs> whatever that is. More trouble for Suresh Kalmadi, the chairman of the Commonwealth Games Organizing Committee, this time in the form of a damning CAG report that directly indicts him and other top brass of the Games Federation. This report by India's Apex Auditing Authority, then led by Vinod Rai, heavily criticized last-minute preparations for the Games, saying it created an artificial climate of urgency that led to the waiving of important protocols like proper contracts. Without ironclad contracts, budget for the Games began to fluctuate wildly. A city restoration project that was estimated at $16 million had a final price tag of around $140 million. Even traffic and communications infrastructure costs doubled from $9 to $18 million. Soon, the prices of everything, from turf and track to treadmills, air conditioning, and even toilet paper, were brought into question. The ballooning budget only convinced the public that the trail of corruption led to the highest levels of government. But defying expectations, the games went off without a hitch. Just when Kalmadi thought he scored a home run, 
the Central Bureau of Investigation, or CBI, dropped a bombshell. The news tightens around SAC CWG organizing committee chairman Suresh Kalmadi and nine others in a games-related corruption case. On May 20, 2011, India's foremost investigative agency formally accused Kalmadi and other games officials of manipulating contract procedures to favor Swiss timing, a Switzerland-based company responsible for the timing, scoring, and results system, and in the process, disqualifying other companies with much lower bids. By awarding Swiss Timing an exorbitant contract of around $30 million, Kalmari and his aides had caused the public exchequer a loss of $20 million. Kalmari was fired from the game's organizing committee. Hours after his arrest by the CBI in April 2011, was suspended from the Congress party as well. I have not taken any decision alone. There's an entire executive board. There is a OC finance committee. There is another finance committee. With all the government officers there, so I have not taken any decision alone. Kalmadi, who faced a maximum sentence of life imprisonment, spent 10 months in jail before he was granted bail. Other accused high-level officials, such as Game Secretary General Lalit Banot and Director General VK Varma, were also arrested but later granted bail. They all maintain their innocence. The trial for Kalmadi and his nine co-accused began in 2013 in a fast-track court, but is yet to be concluded. In fact, the very first games-related scam conviction came in 2015, five years after the games were held for a forged contract that caused a loss of $300,000. The financial impact of the games is still being felt by Indians long after the games concluded. To fund the final phases of the event, the Delhi government rolled back subsidies on LPG cylinders and hiked bus fares, water tariffs, land prices, and value-added tax on ordinary household items. <laughs> As of 2020, 50 cases of payment disputes related to contracts worth around $153 million remain pending. Rather than national pride, the 2010 Commonwealth Games brought this dispute to India and dragged its deep-rooted parallel economy, sluggish judicial system, and lack of bureaucratic oversight under a harsh spotlight. But the most serious consequence of the 19th Commonwealth Games was felt at the ballot box when the public, frustrated with the Congress Party's opaque dealings, voted Narendra Modi and the BJP into power in 2014.